Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh ladies and gentlemen welcome back to another video so we're gonna set up SDL3 with kit sub modules and CMake let's get started okay so you can call your project whatever you want I'm gonna call it SDL tutorial okay uh, you can use whatever language you want standard I'm gonna go with C++23 let's go ahead and do this now I'm gonna create a little directory here called src I'm going to put my main.cpp there, refactor, and I'm going to create a new directory called vendor. And also we're going to have a new file called .gitignore. Now my gitignore will go ahead and ignore the build folder. Uh, so it won't get, uh, it will ignore, but it will be ignored by git. And that's pretty much it. Okay, so next up what we could do is to as i said all right so in, inside a uh, vendor i'm going to create a cmake list right there there you go and inside src i'm going to do the same again and so another cmake list and of course we already have one cmake list by default here uh, as you can see and in fact let me enable auto reload here and in fact here we have a hello world by default there you go hello world now uh the thing is now Let's actually do one little thing. You could, by the way, set CMake CXX standard uh, required to on if you want it to be required. And there you go, pretty much. Now we could add this executable. We could do add uh, or target sources instead. Uh, it's actually the same thing, but I just prefer it this way. I could tell is it private or public or what and in this case private it's fine okay so rc slash main cp now instead of doing this guy here we could go ahead go to our new cmake list inside of src directory now we don't need to say src okay and now to include this uh this uh, CMake list that is inside SRC. I'm just going to say here add subdirectory uh, SRC. Now, of course, here our project name is SDL Tutorial. And if you want our executable to be the same name as the project name, like this, for example, instead of hard coding it, what we could do, we could say project name. Oops, project name. Just like that. Instead of project name, we could also say CMake project name, but the difference is that CMake project name is a global, so it's gonna take the, the I think the project that is in the top, uh, the, the, in the, the root of the directory, okay? Uh, but project name will take the latest uh, declared project, which I think I'm gonna use right here, okay. Uh, but that's pretty much it, really. And as you can see here, when you want a literal string in CMake, you just write it. If you want the value of a variable that is called with that string uh, or that is named with that string, then you use this syntax right here to, to get the value of that variable with that specific name. Anyways, and so yeah, that's it for that one. Now let's go to the vendor. And in fact, here I'm gonna actually make sure to go to the terminal, make sure you are in the root directory and say git init to initialize git, and then go ahead inside of vendor, you know, and here git submodule add, and go to your SDL stuff. And here's, by the way, the wiki uh, of SDL3. Make sure it's SDL3, not SDL2. Uh, and there's, by the way, also readme migration, which will help you to migrate your SDL2 project if you have already to SDL3. Or if you have knowledge about SDL2, but you don't about SDL3, there's a lot of breaking changes in SDL3. So you can also go ahead and read this migration guide. You'll learn a lot about what changed, etc. So yeah. And in fact, by the way, this is inside of SDL repo, docs, the readme migration. Inside of docs, there you go, and readme migration. Anyways, so here, what I need here is go ahead, copy the, this guy, get submodule add, there you go. We're adding the submodule SDL, and that's pretty much it. All right, let's wait a bit. And while it's doing that, it's as you can see, it's cloning SDL as a Git submodule of this Git repo. 
Okay, so here I'm just gonna add subdirectory while it's doing that, add subdirectory SDL. So we're gonna add that subdirectory. So it's because SDL repo can also contains a CMake list. All right, and in fact, after that, I'm gonna create a new library and this library will be of type interface. And you can think about interface, it's just kind of like a group of libraries uh, together as one target, you know? Uh, of course, this is just a so simplified explanation, but at least for our use case, it works. <laughs> so add library, and here we can call it whatever you want, uh, just the same as add executable, you call it your target, whatever you want. In this case, I'm calling it vendor. And the next step is you go ahead and here you've got to say interface or whatever type it is. All right, in my case, it's interface. And then I'm gonna say target, uh, link libraries. And here I'm gonna link uh, who, uh, the target, which is vendor, uh, the vendor interface. And then I'm gonna link whatever I want here. But after I say interface, you can only use, inter now there's interface, public, private, but for interface targets, you can only use interface for that. And anyway, interface. And here you actually link whatever you want. Uh, of the libraries. For example, if you have other library, then you're just going to add another side directory like this, you know, and you're going to go ahead and link whatever target you want from that library. Now, SDL3 is the project name, and there's also a target called SDL3 inside of the project name. And in fact, this is just an alias, because in fact, if you go ahead and check the SDL3 repo CMake list, if you go down a bit, I'm going to zoom in a bit, and if you go down, you can notice that if target is DL3, is DL3 shared. So if you built SDL3 uh, using the shared target, then what's going to happen, it's just going to alias SDL3, SDL3 target as the SDL3 shared. And otherwise, it's going to uh, alias it as static. So yeah, there's actually multiple targets here. There's SDL3 shared and SDL3 static. And in fact, this SDL3 shared and SDL3 static is based on a variable called... Uh, I think build shared lips, there you go. It's uh, on that guy. Now, if we want to actually go ahead and build uh, SDL statically, what we should go ahead and do is go to your uh, CMake. Okay, so inside of, in your CMake options, add a new option, dash D for, which stands for define, as I said, and add that build shared libs and set it to on or off. Okay, so in my case, uh, we don't want shared libs, we want static, so we're going to set it to off and apply. Okay, now it's going to link statically to our uh, uh, executable, so we don't really need, uh, you know, what is it called? We don't need DLLs, etc. Uh, you can just ship your executable as a whole, right? Now, if I actually run this guy, hopefully it works. There you go, hello world. But let's actually try right now to use some SDL code. Uh, okay, hold on. Uh, did we link to vendor? I don't think. So let's go to our CMake list, add subdirectory, SRC. And before SRC, we gotta add another subdirectory called uh, vendor. You know, and SRC will link to the vendor interface. So where is the CMake list of SRC? It should link to vendor. So target uh, link libraries, and it should link the project name, like that that target that is called with the project name, link it privately to vendor. And there you go. Now, when you link to vendor, it's, uh, it's going to link to all the stuff that vendor is linking <laughs> because it's an interface. Uh, but yeah. And just wait a bit until it builds stuff. Up. Well, right now it's still generating actual uh, Visual Studio CMake stuff. And in fact, by the way, oh, let me make sure this is Visual Studio because Mitri W didn't work for me, uh, at least in my test. So yeah. Visual Studio Toolchain and Visual Studio Generator. Okay, so if you're using Visual Studio, you're on the safe side. If not, depends. I don't know if it's gonna work for you or not. I'm also a beginner in CMake and I didn't find any resource, any tutorial about SDL3, especially with Git sub modules, especially with CMake. So yeah, pretty crazy stuff. Uh, but yeah, let's go. All right. <laughs> Waiting for it to to uh, generate. 
let's actually remove this let's keep it as it went before just so I can see if it's built uh, in the first place. Okay, let's build an SDL as you can see. And of course, it's going to link it statically to our executable. And there you go, hello world. But now I can actually go ahead and include SDL, SDL.h. Let's go. And now instead of this guy, I can say SDL log. Oops. What is going on here? Okay, let's go. <laughs> SDL log here, you could say the format. And then you could give it whatever you tell it in the format. Here, I'm t I told it in the format that it, it should expect a string. So I can give it a string here. Hello world. And now if I run this guy, I should get my log ready. So if this works, then SDL is working for you. At least it linked successfully and you can include the SDL.h. But anyways, as you can see, info, hello world. Nice. Now, if you want to link uh, dynamically, what we should do, we should either remove this completely, but because by default, SDL actually links dynamically and that's actually the, the, the recommended way of doing it. Otherwise, you could just say dash D build shared lips on, set it to on instead. Uh, for my case, I'm just gonna remove it all together because why not, apply, okay. And let's go. And I should also mention that when you use that dash D build, you know, lib stuff. If some other library is also using that variable, it's also abiding by the variable. So that library will also go ahead and link dynamically, uh, you know. But anyways, now it's again loading the CMake folder. And by the way, let's actually, because in fact, if you notice here, it's also generating for me SDL3 test, which is useless for me. So what I can do uh, before adding the search for SDL, the order is pretty important. Uh, set SDL test to off so it won't generate it anymore. Now there's a lot of options that you can set. I mean, if we, if we even check these cache variables, look at that. There's a lot right there that you can toggle on and off to make, for example, SDL lighter by getting stuff off that you don't need. Uh, for example, DirectX or whatever. But anyway, so right now it's actually working out, but there is a problem. It returns some error code right there. And if I actually run in debug mode, this is what it's saying. The code execution cannot proceed because SDL3.dll was not found. They're starting the program and fix this problem. So the thing is it cannot find uh, the DLL of SDL, our executable, of course. So uh, why that's the case? I mean, if we check our build, by the way, let's... Why, why this? Oh my God. I have to actually set the build directory again. Oh my. Okay. Because I changed the tool chain, etc. That's just so annoying. Anyways, uh, let's remove this crazy stuff. And it should right now generate that guy. I don't know what is going on about this, but it works anyway. So. All right, let's wait for it to generate build files. Okay. And now if we look into, oh, there's still SDL test. I think it should be called a SDL3 test. Well, I don't really remember well, so we could check again the CMake list of SDL to make sure. Uh, so there's multiple options. There is, I believe, SDL tests. Okay, so what? I mean, yeah, it's called SDL test like this. So what's going on wrong with that? Vendor SDL test off. Weird, it shouldn't do that. I'm not sure why it did. So, but anyway, uh, let us do this. Right now, I've noticed it's actually building SDL statically. Uh, oh, dynamically, I mean, but again, we have that problem of the SDL3.dll, uh, which is not found. So there's a lot of ways to fix this. Uh, and most people seems like to to copy the, the SDL3.dll because in fact, if you look into here, into the build directory, right? And you look into debug in my case, I think. Hold on, what? Where is the 
Where is the build? Okay, SRC debug. There you go. Here's my executable, but there's no SDL uh, DLL. Okay, so if we look into vendor SDL, you can notice that it is got generated here, not here. Now, uh, I found an easy way instead of saying, uh, instead of just, I mean, if we, if we actually go ahead, put the SDL3.dll manually like this, it will actually work. Uh, but this is pretty much crazy because every time you generate the SDL3.dll, you have to do that, uh, which is pretty stupid. Otherwise, you could actually go ahead and say file and then just copy that using CMake, tell it to do that. Uh, but this is, in my opinion, not so elegant, I guess. I mean, even my, my own solution is not too elegant, but I mean, yeah, I think it's much nicer for me. Anyways, uh, here, if you set CMake runtime output directory, of course, before everything, and just set it to, let's say, you can set it to whatever you want, but in my case, I'm just gonna set it to the uh, CMake uh, binar current binary directory. So it will, all of the stuff that got generated by the targets will get go to the uh, current binary directory, which is this guy, hopefully. So let's try this up now and they should work out. Uh, but I guess I have to regenerate my CMIC. What, how? Oh yeah, right now it's in debug, as you can notice here, the, the, all of them are here. Pretty cool, pretty cool, pretty cool. And that's pretty much it, how it's set up SDL. So yeah, goodbye everyone. Thank you for watching, see you later, goodbye.